Hey everybody, this is yet another computer repair tutorial video from Q Computer Company. You may notice that my camera is positioned in a much different spot than usual. Normally my camera is actually on the table. Well, after nearly three years of service, my old faithful cheap tabletop tripod finally broke. This tripod came with my DXG567V's um, value pack. And trust me, I used the crap out of this tripod. Many places, and um, I broke it the other day. So the camera is actually positioned on a Vanguard tripod. It's actually a floor standing tripod. So um, I can't actually get you close ups in this video. You're actually getting a much. Um, different approach to the video this time so anyways if you like it feel free to comment maybe I might consider doing more videos like this so anyways um, we got this computer in for service and here is the replacement part this is a compact CQ 62-220 US and it has a cracked LCD display and it hasn't been too long since I last worked on this thing I last serviced it on October 29, 2012. And that was reinstalling Windows. And I had to take this thing completely apart to reinsert the motherboard's CMOS battery. Amazingly, it popped loose. So anyways, let's go ahead and show you that screen. Go ahead and shine my very bright 220 lumen bicycle headlight on it. And it's cracked up in the upper upper left corner. I don't know if you can see or not. I'm gonna get you a close up of this. That way you can see. I only had to turn the thing on to show you. It's it's that bad. You might be able to see there is a pressure spot. Too much pressure was applied to it right here and that cracked the screen, so that's what we're replacing is the L C screen in this computer. So now I'll go ahead and get started. I'll grab me a drink here. Let's go ahead and get this done over with. I waited about a week or so for the part to arrive. So let's have at it. Go ahead and unpack the replacement LCD. Purchases off of eBay. I think it was around fifty or sixty dollars, something like that. <clears throat> it helps have a nice sharp knife laying around when you need it. I'd say this thing was packaged very well. And of course, there's no telling what UPS could have done with it. They may have played football with it for all I know. Anyways, here is our replacement LCD. It has a backlight and everything. All I gotta do is install it. The screen cable hooks up right here. So let's have at it. Go ahead and put all this to the side. Let's gonna start taking this thing apart. First thing you wanna do on a laptop for you doing any kind of service work to it is to remove the battery and set it to the side. And just to be there's no residual charge within the uh, laptop such as maybe in the capacitors from the power supply coming from the battery or whatever just press the power button a few times that way for sure it's discharged. To get your LCD display, you need to go ahead and take out the screws that hold in the palm rest. You'll probably have to remove the keyboard too, it just depends. Each computer is slightly different. I'm going to slide this over a little bit so you can see better. I try not to be in y'all's way, but 
the same time I have pretty much no choice to have the camera right here. I'll be going to Best Buy later so we can get me a replacement tabletop tripod. In many cases in the back side of the laptop, the screws in this area are responsible for holding the LCD display in place. Need to magnetize the screwdriver. Okay, the screwdriver is magnetized. I'm going to pull that screw out. Let's go ahead and keep going. I already mentioned it helps to group your screws depending on size. And we'll go ahead and remove the access door to the Wi-Fi and memory. The only thing we got to do here is pull out the wireless antenna leads from the Wi-Fi card. Which, of course, you always want to be careful with these little snap-in doors on laptops. You don't want to break them. There's that. I'm going to sit in my chair. Makes this a lot easier. And we'll go ahead and pull out these leads here for the Wi Fi card. They just pop right out. And of course, this Wi Fi card has indicators that tell you where each cable goes where. And we're going to continue removing screws. Okay, now the palm rest and keyboard should s simply snap right out. I have to double check and make sure all the screws are out. I'm going to go ahead and take off this hard drive cover and just make sure there's no more additional screws under here that I missed. And sure enough, we have two more screws in here. These might just be to the main board, I'm not sure. Yep, so um, if you work on this exact computer, do remove those screws that are next to the hard drive too. I'm going to remove the keyboard and be careful with these keyboards because on this computer the keyboard is very hard to get to pop loose. Last time I popped, last time I took this computer apart I popped the delete key loose by mistake and I had to reattach it to the keyboard. Which I'd recommend you try to remove the keyboard first. I was going for the touchpad first, not sure why. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this little bitty ribbon cable. Pull this little latch up and it just pulls right out. There's a the keyboard. It's amazing how thin they are. 
Believe it or not, most desktop keyboards are just as thin. You just don't realize it because of the design of the keyboard. We have two more ribbon cables here. Obviously, one goes to the touchpad, and I guess the other goes to some something else in here. We we'll pull these out. There's another ribbon cable over here. We'll go ahead and pull it out. We shouldn't have to worry about this cable here. I think that goes to the mic or the speakers. And of course, yeah, we have another screw here, so that's why I always say I kind of messed up by trying to look at, try to pull out the palm rest first. It's best to try to take the keyboard out before you take out the palm rest. I should have known. Now the palm rest should easily pop loose. Open the screen up all the way. It's a matter of popping these plastic tabs on the back of the thing loose. But I tell you, if you do happen to accidentally break something on a palm rest or something some piece of plastic on the laptop if it ever occurs super glue can be your best friend just a bit of advice and yes we do have to remove that cable down here because the speakers are actually built into the palm rest. On some laptops, they're actually, um, well, many laptops for that matter, they're actually integrated into the, um, let's see, on many laptops, they're actually integrated into the rest of the computer, not the actual palm rest. HP computers tend to go together different than Dell's. Which I've worked on many Dells before. Like every brand, if it's HP Group, Acer Group, or Dell Group, they go to get her differently. So, anyways, we got the palm rest loosed, loose, and here is, um, of course, here is a little PCB that has the power button. Here's your touchpad, your mouse buttons. There's the back of that. That's how it looks. Set that to the side. And if you can't tell already, well you probably saw earlier, but look at all of those thumbprints on that screen. This is one way that many laptop screens die. People touch them too much, and usually what can happen is people apply too much pressure and cause it to break. And to think that Windows 8 come out, oh, that's this is gonna make it worse. For all those non-touch computers out there. Anyways, let's go ahead and remove the screen, the lid from the rest of the computer. First thing we want to go ahead and do is detach the microphone cable, which is located down here. I'm not sure if you can see or not. Ah, oh, there's a screw. We'll go ahead and pull that out. And we'll go ahead and remove the video cable, which it just pulls right up. Be careful because there's so many little contacts in this cable. The last thing you want to do is mess one up. I'm trying to remember where the Wi Fi. Here they are. There's the Wi Fi leads. I was wondering where they was at. Let's go ahead and. 
then do this cable here. You're gonna take out a few screws. These screws here, we have four. These four screws hold the lid to the rest of the notebook. And a word of advice to you all, if you have a laptop, always be careful when you open your screen up. Don't use too much force because if you think about physics, you're you're pushing a lot of pressure here. It's putting a whole lot more pressure down here. This acts like a giant lever. And the last thing you'll do is break your mounts for your um, lid. I've actually seen that happen a couple of times. I've seen people that had laptops with broken mounts for their lids so their lid was really loose on their computer. Now I noticed that the lid on my Dell's from 1525 is getting loose on one side. I'm going to have that looked at. I'll have to spend some time to pull it apart and figure out what's going on with it. Got one more screw here. And our lid should come loose from the rest of the computer. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and lift the lid out. Here's the lid. You can set the rest of the computer to the side. Here's something funny. Actually, looking online, there was a guy on YouTube who um, had a special trick at getting the screen out of his computer. They actually bypassed how to tear this thing apart. The way I did it was the way the HP advises you to do it. But um, there was this guy on YouTube who just flips the screen back and and takes out that way. So anyways, um, if you're willing to do things that way, you feel free to go right ahead. But anyways, this screen, or at least the lid on this computer, comes apart differently than many others. And I'd say it's not built as well as, let's say, a Dell. Okay, just as I figured, it just snaps apart. All I need is a flathead screwdriver to get this thing to snap apart. In a way, I don't really like that. Because it wouldn't take much to pop this thing loose by mistake. Let's see, um, a Dell Latitude D630. I actually got a video on YouTube of replacing, well, actually replacing the screen cable in one of those. And a, let's see, a DV6000, HP DV6000, which I don't have a video on. Um, the displays go together, at least the lids go together using um, screws. You pop the little rubber covers off and you just take the screws out and it comes right apart. This is held together with a combination of adhesive and it just snaps all together. Which I'm not very crazy about. But I guess that's a way to get the um, lid thinner but at the same time as I mentioned it's more fragile. Of course, be careful and work on this too because it's very. This plastic is extremely thin; would not take much to break. And I'm just gently popping my screwdriver in here, trying to pull these little pieces apart in here. And voila! At the bottom. We actually have screws. So this computer only has screws at the bottom. And have a look at these very thin covers. Those won't last long. It, 
In fact, it just practically fell right off of there. I mean, all it takes is a fingernail to pop it loose. And it's off of there. So now, go ahead and take these two screws out. There's one on each side. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Now let's continue the pull apart process. And more plastic snaps here. Which, um, this very thin lid on this computer explains exactly why the screen got messed up. This very thin lid puts a lot of stress on the LCD. I am not very crazy about that. Alrighty, got all the adhesive popped loose. Have a look at how thin that is. Isn't that just wonderful? I mean, look at it. Extremely thin. And have a look at this lid while you're at it too. Very, very thin. So that means when you're opening and closing the lid on the Compact CQ62, you're putting a lot of stress on the LCD. And if you noticed, the pressure spot was up here. This could have been possibly from close, just closing the lid with an extra bit of force. I'm disappointed with Compact for this, or HP for that matter. I'm not very happy with them. Normally, when you um, let's see, normally when you look at um, a lid on a laptop is built very rugged to help it withstand I mean some abuse but everyday use on <laughs> this kind of computer will practically break it Okay, I got the LCD pulled loose. We have, let's see, have two, two screws on each side. First, we'll go ahead and remove this screen cable should just pull right out had to untape it from the rest of the system I mean the screw, um, LCD here had to try to remove this tape
You can care what's pumped right out. We'll go ahead and unpackage our replacement screen. Know exactly what we're working with here. There's a replacement. Of course, always observe um, ESD um, procedures so that way you don't risk harming the component with static. And there is the replacement screen. Of course, I'm going to try to wait, try to keep this protective plastic on here because I don't want to smudge up the screen if I can help it. But if I had to, I can clean it off. So we'll go ahead and remove those two screws on the side. That way I can go ahead and replace this LCD here. And of course, again, I apologize, you can't really see what I'm doing. I'll go ahead and turn the camera down just a little bit. See, that helped a little bit. Basically, I have a screw here, a screw here, and two more just like on the other side. These are very tiny little screws. And as I mentioned in this lid, my suspicions are correct. This lid is being used as, I mean, the LCD is being used as a primary structuring on this notebook. Now, I don't really agree with that. I don't think it's right that they're doing it like this. Then again, they probably did it on purpose that way. Customers will break their screens after the one year warranty ends, and um, that way HP can make some money. That's not always the way it works. Not everybody takes their computer back to the manufacturer for repairs. Oftentimes, they get sent to repair shops like me. And repair shops like me don't rip the people off, rip the customer off. So here's our broken LCD. This one took a very bad hit in the corner. And I believe it had to do with probably closing the lid a bit hard. I'm not exactly sure how, how it actually got damaged, but seeing it's really um, cheap and made that lid is, there's no telling. Now go ahead and install a replacement screen. Plastic is trying every way it can to pop loose. I'll go ahead and reattach this. Okay, got these side pieces reattached. I'll go ahead and reattach the video cable. It slides right in. And of course, be careful with it because it's very fragile. And of course, that tape actually helps you reattach the cable. And of course, also, it's, it's there for protection, too. Okay, from here on out, basically everything is in reverse order. I'll be reattaching this screen to the lid, putting the lid back together, and reassembling the computer. And now I'll update you on how everything went. Okay, got the computer back together, and our replacement LCD screen is working wonderfully. Have a look at that. 
This computer belongs to a friend of mine, so when I installed Windows 7, I put in my own custom background image for the login screen. It's a picture I took at Myrtle Beach. Anyways, um, got this computer fixed. No more broken LCD screen. So anyways, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask and thanks for watching.